fuck is up, everybody? Welcome back to DFW Metal Mayhem, the most brutal podcast in the Metroplex. Off location, because we just had to do it with these guys. For these guys, guys, introduce yourselves and what band you're in and what you do in the band, please. I'm Scary Gary. I play the bass. Flash Grinder, vocals. Or Crop Dust. Crop Dust. God damn. One of my favorite <laughs> fucking local bands. I'm so excited that this is happening. How the fuck are you guys doing today? Good, man. Good. Good. Dealing with this weather, but hey, <laughs> the swine flu, so what do you expect? <laughs> uh, swine flu. So, let's just go right into it. Like, what is the history of Crop Dust? Let's roll this shit all the way back. Yes, I would love to know this. Get out your fucking notes and take lessons, motherfuckers. Well... We all ran into each other in the swamps, basically. And we're all like-minded characters. And we all had a great idea to give back to the hippie community oh, really? by dealing them their own medicine and creating an army of slippies fueled by dead hippies. That's fucking awesome. That's like, I mean, like, what, what better history lesson can you give than that? Yeah. Um, now, there's so many things. The mask. You made that shit? My girlfriend made this. Oh my god, you gotta, can, can, can you run me down the process of that? Well, you do a cast of my face, and then we uh, pretty much mold it. And then I remember the last show I saw you had a whole fucking like body vest too. Yeah. Like I've never seen that before, like in the local scene. I I, I think it's safe to say that that fucking flesh right here is probably like has like the most stage presence of any front man in the local scene. I, yeah. I think it goes without saying just because no one is doing what you're doing. I mean, I'm gonna try because I kind of want to do the you know, the bow work for skull arch and do like war paint and all that. But it ain't gonna come close to that. That, that cool, like that British shit over there. Beautiful face. So, how would you describe the style of the person? Oh man, uh, just grungy sludge, doomy stone. Now, I, I, and I mean, it's great shit, because like, I, cause I remember when I first got into the local scene, I remember I wasn't really huge on, on some genres, like black metal, I wasn't huge on sludge metal either, because I thought it was like too slow for my liking, but then like, kind of like, it kind of popped my shadow with black metal, like, oh my god damn, I think I saw you guys last year when you played with Martin Blood Exploder, Oh, fuck, what are the other bands on that? Uh, Martin Blood played the last. Right down. Yeah, 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 that's right. Oh, was it Silverton or was it uh, Acoustic? I'm not sure. I think it was Acoustic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, they did an immortal cover. Yeah, yeah. They did, what, did it in the Acoustic? What, what do you remember the song? I don't remember what song okay. it was. Because the first time I saw SCV, they did a uh, Tyrants. Yeah, okay. That's what it was. Yeah, I think they did the acoustic. I think they acoustic that. that. Okay, I, but, I saw the other version of it. But back to the inspiration. <laughs> so, uh, last year, y'all guys won, I guess, like an award. I guess there's like these, um, I don't know if, I don't know, what were they called again? The, the, uh, maximum Distortion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And y'all won the, the award for like the best yeah, stuff. Yeah, one, one of my buddies uh, got a hold of me online and was like, bro. Took the liberty and added your name to this voting ballot. And he's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, this metal magazine does this voting thing, and uh, they got different genres, and I put you guys in stoner metal. And, uh, yeah, this is to vote you guys in to be voted on best yada yada. And uh, I was like, fuck it, man. So we just to look about it and we started it up online. You were, we were surprised how many people actually voted yeah, it. Everybody jumped on board, man. And we ended up pulling through on our genre by like 100 points over the person. Damn. Yeah. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> and I'm not gonna say who was underneath us, but they were they they are a pretty big band and they are touring right now. Wow. Damn, and we beat them by a lot. Huh. Because I because I, mean, I remember seeing that and I'm like, God damn, I wonder who won the thrash number one because I like, beat a lot of really good thrash bands. I looked, I saw War Beast, and I'm like, oh wow, well yeah, you know what, not not super shocking. And I think they won by like a fucking huge one. Yeah, we've been one for all those people voting for us really. Got on that show. Yeah. Like, like every yeah. member of our band, <laughs> their own category. Like he was in like what? what were you in? Sludge. Sludge vocalist, and he like there were a bunch of people in that category, and he won that. And I was in the stoner. There weren't very many people in the base, the stoner metal bass category. It was like me and one other person. Mm -hmm. But I won that one. That was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, like, uh, so like what? Did you like a little trophy or like a little like fucking? It was, it was a little wooden plaque with like the what have you on it. That's still pretty fucking yeah. cool. <laughs> oh yeah, that is cool. So like, how long has Cropless exactly been around? About, I'm trying to remember. I, I can't even remember. Me, me and him and our first drummer were doing this in fourteen. Oh, okay. okay. So since then. Cool. Uh, but this go around with this lineup, we've been going at it since uh, a year ago, December, not this last December, but like December. Mm -hmm. And that's with okay. Colombian Necktie, Colombian necktie and, and Grim, Grim Reefer. Grim Reefer. I love those fucking names. Where'd you come up with those names? It's awesome. And it's it's uh we're we're wanting to get we're wanting to get like a like a comic book strip or like a horror movie out of this. Yeah, that's what I noticed. <laughs> And, and, and kind of like what I feel on like when you guys are on stage too is kind of that, you know, yeah. uh, kind of a horror movie type of, and you know, yeah, uh, that's what we're trying aura I guess. Yeah. You know, it's 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 really fucking cool. Yeah. We we both agree that you guys have like the best stage presence Thank you, in you. the local scene Love as you. well as like just a fucking great band. You I know, kind of I kind of want to go off on that and say it's kind of like. I kind of think seeing you guys is kind of what made me want to kind of do a show type fun mm -hmm. for my band coming up. It's like, cause, you know, I want to shine. I want to, you know, I want, I want people looking on stage to be like, Jesus fuck Christ, <laughs> that dude's weird, or that dude's scary, or that's <laughs> cool as fuck. I like his face paint. You gotta leave everybody going, what the fuck? Yeah. That's the point. <laughs> and and that's that's especially, uh, I think it was the second time I saw you guys is when you had the head. And you know we're kicking it around, and it was going around everyone. And I was like, man, that's so fucking cool, you know. Yeah. And so yeah, that's that's kind of where uh, you know. I, I remember that night because I think it was the New Year's show, the Splatterfish pulled it out of the nature. Yeah. And uh, and I remember when they first came on, and I was like right in front of Abel, and I was like, and he oh just, yeah, and he just <laughs> took the head and just went. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it to death. And then uh, I believe. At Tomcats, you did it again, and I'm like, man, that's not enough. I grabbed that bitch, I got into the mosh pit, I was like fucking smashing my head into it. <laughs> and then after, and then after their set, I, I was walking around, and people were like, dude, are you okay? What the fuck? Are you bleeding? I'm like, what? no, I'm good. I'm good. I got, <laughs> I got everyone saw me like smashing my face into the decapitated head. Yeah. <laughs> I had a friend of mine at the tree show, I think, and he had blood on his fucking nose. And I saw him after the show. I didn't know anything. I didn't know that that went down. I thought he had broke his nose. I said, like, hey man, what the hell? What the fuck did you? Like, your singer with the. I was like, oh yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, we'll be going. Yes. <laughs> um, and now, like, like, you guys have like any issue with like previous bands or anything? Was like any other projects or that, that you wanted to work with before Prop Dust? Eh. Nah, no, nah, I mean, uh, drummer. Jorge was in this band called Corruption. Ooh, yeah. Are they from around here? Uh, I think so. I think so. Like, I think they jammed here. Um, as far as the other bands I've been in, I uh, started my first like, band, gigging band, was this old punk band called The Unemployables. <laughs> a couple of my, like the other two members of The Unemployables, they're in a band that's gigging in a lot. Band called the Faps. Yeah, I heard of them actually. They're a pretty good band. 
Uh, it's like some thrashy, Ramonesy kind of poppy kind of but heavy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not really one for pop, and that's kind of the reason I'm in the direction I'm in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I actually was on Tinder one time, and I was talking to this chick, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, do you like any, you know, because she said she liked metal, and so I'm like, well, you know, do you, do you go out and see local shows? She goes, not very much, but I have a friend in a band called Crop Dust, and I was like, okay, I've heard of them, I've heard of them, and so then when I saw them, I'm like, whoa, okay, all right, I got you. <laughs> okay. You mentioned you've got, like, holy shit. No, because she, like, or whatever. Probably what most people should be doing at some point. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, like, can, 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 cause you brought up like, like the comic strip. I, I, I honestly could see you guys like doing like a fucking, like actually making comic or covering like what your ideas are of prop dust and yeah. like, Grabbing out these people and fucking grinding their fucking flesh up. And yeah, smoking each and each shit. each uh each comic book would be about an individual song. Oh fuck! Cool. Yeah. So okay, so like you already have this emotion, like with like yeah, a touch with it's people. all it's all spitballing spit ideas right now. So would it kind of be like uh, an expanded version of each song? Um, yeah, the, the actual story of what's going on, mm -hmm. like the song, which would just be like the meat and potatoes. I gotcha, cool. Alright, and I guess I have a question is, like you have, you kind of have a, a DIY CD out, um, mm -hmm. when do you guys think you're going to be coming out with, uh, you know, like an EP or something? Well, we're working on that right now, we got some buddies that we just went and recorded with. Oh shit. Oh yeah. And we're waiting, we gotta wait till he gets back to town, because we gotta put the vocals on it, and then we gotta put the lead part on it. Mix and master and all that shit. So. No, no, I know some bands do it because um, you guys know they have like a demo out of it and then like when they're like an EP or a full, they'll remaster the songs that are on that demo and they're saying, throw it on there. You guys can have a demo that's on that CD. That's kind of like our, it's 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 kind of like our, so you've expanded on some of the songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, the, all, of them. all the songs that are on the first one <laughs> Excellent. are like rough drafts of what they are right now. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Okay, yeah. awesome, awesome. So when you hear when you hear that first demo that we've got, it's a lot different than what you hear live. Yeah, yeah. I was I was wondering about that. That was before we even had a Grim Reaper in. Yeah, yeah. we just got the, the guitarist right there. I got you. Just walk past. I'm gonna be necktie, just looking at us like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Awesome. You got that. Yeah, I was. Cause I, I've been, you know, I've been wanting you guys, to, you know, an actual. Cause, you know, I, I understand the DIY. And I understand that you have music out there, and it just to get your stuff out there. But yeah. I like having a nice hard copy, you know. Yeah. You know, something I can show off and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm really. We're, 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 that's what we're trying to. What we're trying to get. Them. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's cool. I mean, like, shit, now, well, now that you have these songs, like, the rough drafts on the CD, and you expand them, would you throw those on the floor? We'll end up doing those on, like, some rare shit, like, the rough one on sides or some shit. That would be rad as fuck. Like, I always, growing up, I always liked the bands I was into, they always had the little secret song shit on the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like 13 minutes. So, like, the in track, songs. you're wondering, you're like, um, why is this bitch 20 minutes long? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember, um, uh, or no, nowadays, most, like, touring bands do, like, fucking, like, oh, here's a new track, but it, you, but you can only listen to it if you bought the CD in Japan. Yeah. And I don't know why it's Japan. Like, it's no other country but Japan. I don't, there's I don't other know. ones, but yeah. <laughs> well, for, like, it's, like, 90% fucking Japan and, like, maybe Germany. Yeah. I, I don't know what's up in them to maybe just like maybe but I don't know if you do the Germany thing and to fucking get them all your shit, right? <laughs> God, I really hope it doesn't happen in the city. I remember uh, uh, Marta, they uh, they, they yeah. came here and they went to Austin and apparently they met some anti protest in there. 
And I believe after that, that show didn't get canceled, I don't think. But, but the one uh, after got canceled because the cops. Stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because cops like we can't guarantee your safety from these protesters or some shit. <laughs> God damn! I hope that never comes to the fucking local scene. Yeah. Because I kind of think if well, if it I kind of think if Antifa tries to fuck with these guys, I think well, this dude will rip them in half. Well, and throw them and, the and that's, that's kind of what my thing is. That if something like that happens, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a massive retaliation from the scene. Oh yeah. You know, like they're not we're not going to fucking stand by and you know let that shit happen. Yeah, <laughs> and and. Um, and I bring it up because, you know, like, Crop Dust is like a band that, like, you know, their, their songs are definitely not lovey-dovey. <laughs> They're definitely really extreme hardcore, you know, like, lyrics are absolutely insane if you actually listen to them, you know. And you never know a special snowflakes out there in the world when you offend that random shit, you know. Fuck that, we're here to offend everybody. Yeah, exactly. That's the fucking <laughs> Spain point. and everything. Fucking yeah. Skull Archer is about a fucking spirit that gets cast from the world because he was killed by by corrupt people and so he goes throughout time possessing archers from different eras to literally destroy humanity and in see, any way he can. I think that's another pretty cool thing that I think adds to the to the atmosphere of crop dust is that background, that story, you know. Whereas a lot of bands it they don't really have any 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 type of, you know, substance to it. Yeah. And so I think that's pretty fucking cool that you guys have that and that you guys are trying to build the band off of that. Yeah. So. I definitely think having a background is important. Like, at least having a story. Like, I don't like Dragon Force, right? But, like, but like their albums, like, when you listen to the songs from start to finish, it's like a fucking story. Yeah. You know, like, the fucking Glory Hammer album is a, is a story, you know? And in kind of in a way, if you kind of like listen to the Crop Dust like CD, it definitely like tells like the story too. You know? uh, it came from me and him both working on the house for ten years. Oh fuck yeah! And, and, and so with being in a band like you were talking about, it's just the music that's it. And I kind of wanted it to be like the music and other things that we enjoy, you know, like the dark shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Always uh make people look at us on stage and just confused. They don't know what's going yeah. on. Like I s I've said this before, like I I would love to play in a fucking venue that is for like like <laughs> country music or, or like or like EDM or some shit. Like fucking piss people off and freak people out all at the same time. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, what the fuck is going on? I would go to that show. Yeah. I would go to that show. Just to oh yeah. Speaking of pit bulls, one thing I love that you do is that you fucking you will like go out, like forget which song it is. There's always one song where you actually jump off stage and you start a fucking march. Yeah, I fucking <laughs> love it. Huh? Yeah, that's that's yes. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, that right. that is so much. Fun. Like, I remember doing that the first time and it completely caught me off guard. Yeah. Like, I was just like <laughs> standing there, like you know, banging my head and whatnot. I was just, I was getting the feel of it. How like I, I just did like a, I think I just shot up the key which fucks me up all the time. <laughs> and like it would just jumps down right next to me, looks at me, and just goes, whoosh, and like I'm a little motherfucker. So I kind of go <laughs> flying back. I'm like, oh shit. And it just, ah, oh, I love it. I, I, I kind of wish other, okay, again, I kind of wish other bands would kind of take a page from your book and kind of like understand like how you guys work. But at the same time, I don't because I want it to be empty. Yeah, a special thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because of that, that that's kind of what makes everything stand out. So we all actually played uh, last, I believe, was it last week at Reno's? Or was it yeah. before? Last Saturday. Last, last band of the, of the night, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How was that show? It was good. It was good. It was a lot of fun. There's people that's, that's never heard of us, and the guys that uh, opened for us, they were called Mankind Messiah. Yeah. And uh, they were telling their friends about it, hey, stay, check out these guys. And sure enough, we went on, and everyone was just like, "Whoa, who are these guys?" You Fucking know. Right. Yeah, but it was a fun night. I was about to say because it seems like bands that played last at local shows 
sometimes um, it seems like people start leaving on the on the yeah, got to work up shit. Exactly. Yeah. So so when I first saw that, I'm like, oh shit, I hope they get a turn. It was, was alright. We lost a few people, but it was a good turn. Yeah. yeah. And tonight we're going to trees. Yeah. Being at the local showcase at trees. Aiming to peck that motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> Come on around. Come on around. Gordon. Yeah, dude, get in here. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> we gotta load. I'm gonna start loading up and shit. Uh, All right. Okay, go ahead and take care of that. And the word of Colombian necktie. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's cool as shit. Very, uh, very, 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 play shows and we, we don't bring that many people ourselves, but the people that are already there to see the other bands, mm -hmm. we, we always get the same couple of reactions, like, holy shit, or I've never heard anything like this, you guys are fucking awesome. And I'm to start blushing and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, that was kind of like the first time like I saw you guys in, like, I remember seeing April, I'm like, what the fuck is that mask you and this was when you had like four balls and like the shorts yes. instead of the body vest and I thought that was cool too. I remember you getting off stage and like, dude, 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 that was so good, that was so good. I got like and I followed you back to like your merch table. I'm like um, and like I had to ask because I'm like, hey, this dude's either really influenced by Slipknot, Mushroom Head, or Guar. I'm gonna find out which one. I forgot, I forgot what the answer was, but Guar. I was supposed to say probably Guar. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. I was about to say with the attitude and all and, and what you guys do, Guar is definitely yeah. And you yeah. can definitely tell just by, just by the mask, I'm like, it has to be one of those three. Yeah, but then again, I don't think Mushroom Head really does mask I started, uh, I started, I started writing riffs when uh, I was listening to a lot of My Hate God and uh, Meteor, Electric Blizzard, and Sleep. Mm -hmm. Acid Game, Acid Game is uh, a lot to do with Oh, wow. I listened to a lot of Acid Game. Trying to push them. They were that the tone they were pushing was their bass and their guitar and then like a lead guitar and I was trying to get all of that to come out of my bass. So that's why people are like, well, how do we use like metals on my bass? Maybe people just yeah. to make it sound like a rhythm guitar and a bass guitar at the same time. Kind of a, a low distorted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It sounds, it sounds really good to see right there because because for the because I think Crop Dust is like one of the very few bands. Where like the bass actually gets a lot of shine. Oh yeah, I, I respect that because you know for the most part, and Skullwatcher's guilty of it too. Where you know for the most part, Anthony kind of follows behind what Alberto does, which is cool because Anthony can do it, and we, you know we give Anthony his, his times to shine for sure because we want everyone to shine. The man, the man, like I don't know, I just like the heavy bass. I mean, when we started, it was it was just drums, bass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. Okay. We were like, all right, we'll add a guitar. Yeah, we'll add a guitar. And then once we did, uh, we were like, no, we need, we need that. And then we were going to bruise our second guitar string. Uh, yeah. 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 Rudy, Rudy is our second guitarist, and Boy is our third. <laughs> when, did you, when did you find Rudy? How did you find Rudy? Because Rudy's um, really good. Rudy actually, this, it, 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 it all fell into place with Rudy. Like, we were jamming. Jorge and getting everything done with Jorge and we were starting to gig with Jorge and Rudy was just one of those guys that would come over with, with a joint or something and smoke his album and sit in and listen to us. Okay. And every now and then he'd bring over his guitar and like jam a little bit in between songs. And then uh, we were like, man, we'll go out and listen to the 40s. So that's how, that's how, that's how the Grim Reaper came to be. That's cool. Good, good buddy, now he's our guitarist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I think that's the best way to recruit members. It's like, you know... You gotta, you gotta be able to hang out with them. Yeah. You gotta be able to deal with Because you're gonna be around those people most of the time. And that's what we talked about, because a couple weeks ago, we had a, an episode uh, about what we thought was the most important thing for a band to have, and we both agreed that it's special. Yeah. You know, like you have to be yeah. cool with the people. You're not going to go very far if you hate everybody. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, then ideas will conflict more often and 
it's just hard to make music that everyone enjoys. <laughs> and, and you know, all the other reasons that people gave, like being creative, you know, having passion for it, everything that everyone else mentioned falls into place from having strong passion. So it's like, it's like, it's like, I don't know, what's the best part of ice cream? Something with it. Don't tell me some fun. It's like the actual ice cream. And any kind like the cherries and the fucking. The human flesh. On it. <laughs> and there you go. I think you're missing something. Anyway. Now, what would you say your vocal influence would be? Well, one, the first would have to be John Dime Venus. Oh. Yes. And then my second is actually a band called uh, Palma. And they're a uh, melodic death metal. He has some crazy red drums and his vocals, his vocals now have uh, went from the screaming to like a lot of deep vocals now. Mm -hmm. And he still yeah. does his, you know, scream, high pitch scream. But when he first started, that was the thing I wanted to do. I wanted to learn how to do the high pitch scream. Yeah, because man, that takes a whole deal to do it, right? Because, I'm oh, sorry, go on, go on ahead. But anyways, you know, everybody, you know, they, they sing out. Yeah. Well, I know. Everything just goes inward. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So, uh, I'm saying that's all going inward. So it's inhaling? I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, I want to take you to get, to, 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 to get that down, like, to like, practicing that. Because that sounds a little bit complicated. Well, I mean, me and Gary were, like, roommates for a while. And, um, pretty much I've listened to death metal and all this stuff. I've been playing because I hate God. Other dudes like bands, and you know, we kind of ventured away after a while because of a job. We went to Dallas, and so I lived in Dallas. But then, whenever you got a drummer out of nowhere, I added him on Facebook. And kind of like two weeks later, we already had a show. <laughs> so we were like, Yeah, me and my old drummer we were like, Who's gonna who would be able to sing for Brian? It's like, No, we got one guy. Wouldn't, wouldn't, this is your first band. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's pretty fucking cool. That's cool because Scroll Watch was my first band. <laughs> and it's the one I formed. So it makes me feel good. I need a quick self promote right now. I yes, Billy. I, I, <laughs> I know, I know, I always say I, I'm not going to self promote my band. But like, it's so incredible <laughs> though. Like, like it's crazy how in the moment you find out you have things for people out of the band. Stuff. Like, because you know, in the end, we all come from the same place. We just want to go there and do what we like. Because we're not doing this thing. You know what I mean? Progress ain't walking out with your fucking, your fucking, your fucking, your fucking like 1500 in the head, going out to fucking Reno's and slamming 750 down and getting fucked up. You know what I mean? They do it because they love to. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, you guys want circles around a lot of sign words too. Yeah. Just like a lot of other people. But these guys especially want circles a lot. Put these guys on fucking. Put these guys on Summer Slaughter because they yes. asked for it. So you need to go on the Summer Slaughter fucking Facebook page and you need to fucking say Crop This is Speed That Bitch and Sparrows. Yes, yeah, Sparrows. Because, yeah. because Sparrows also wants to be on that shit. Get our fucking vocal music on there because these guys will show up at Rodeo's. Damn shit. And I guess one more quick question is. Uh, Upcoming dates for shows. Uh, what what dates do you guys have coming up? Well, today we're playing at Trees with uh, good buddies of Blackstone. And so, and then uh, the deep. Yeah, the deep. And then our next show will be. You got a calendar. At Andy, yeah. <laughs> at Andy's on the 24th. 24th? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Sleaze's Fist uh, CD release party or Sleaze's Fist reunion show or something like that. I but Sleaze's Fist and the Latter day Tanks are like over. <laughs> the Latter day Tanks. Yeah. yeah. Alright, cool. Uh, the one show you'll be interested in is I think April 1st, you guys are doing. Yeah, we're yeah. playing at the real. Oh, the Demon Seed release. Yeah. Demon Seed oh, CD yeah. successful. I think we're production. opening that too. So yeah. if you're gonna get there, oh, see yeah. us, you gotta get there early. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we we usually try to. And successful production will be there too. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Like we we both think that it's it's just common courtesy and 
you know, to, to come up for the first band and stay to the last band. I mean, I understand sometimes the last bands get the shit in the stick because, you know, people got to get up early and stuff like that. But, you know, try to stick around as long as you can, see everyone because it's supporting our scene. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because again, we all need singles. Yeah. And we're and we kind of we have to have each other's backs. And it's kind of why this whole recent drama thing is going on. Which I don't want to fucking get into. I don't actually thing. even know anything about. No, it. yeah, so, yeah. Don't no, tell me later. <laughs> no, no, no. You're never gonna know because it doesn't deserve to fucking see the light of day. You know, we're all in this together. We can stick to each other's guns. It's just kind of how it goes now. Like you know, I, that's kind of why what, what I've been doing is like you know, promoting myself, you know, getting out there, meeting people, like like fucking running up to April, talking to like right after the first time I saw Brown Dust, you know. Fucking, I was so happy because these guys played my fucking house party. Oh yeah, yeah that's no right. Fucking yeah, idea how, how fucking that wild that shit was. I was like standing up on the top of my couch. I was like, "Come on, guys!" And it was like, "That's right." <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it was so fucking fun. A lot of fun. I'm actually surprised we didn't get any like complaints or like calls from the cops on us or anything like that. Yeah, I, I was sure the cops were gonna show up. We played that whole show. No cops. Yeah. Thumbs up. Makes me want to do another one in July for my birthday. Exactly. Yeah. I really tend to end up doing a half squad for clubs out in the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're also on March 24th. It's uh, Sleezy's Fist and Lager like 18s. It's us, Crop Dust, and we're playing with Rock of the City as well. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Shit. Rock of the City is really fun. Yeah. yeah. They're really good. Too. It's going to be a good show. Mm-hmm. On the new stage at Andy's, can we see that show? Oh yeah, that's right, I heard about that. Right? I've never been there, but Nor I, I want to go because I heard it's really good. Yeah. yeah, Denton's a pretty good scene. Oh yeah? You get a, yeah, you, if you play a show in Denton, you get a lot of walk-ins. Like, nice. People just walk in the square. And, yeah, because there's, there's, there's a lot of college yeah, yeah, campuses about that. Right? Around the tour, to figure out where to so it's in that square area? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably should have done this way earlier. That's that's why I'm, I, I when I started hearing stuff, I whipped out the the recorder. We're in the rehearsal studio. And people are working. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. And as I said, normally we do this in my you know in my in my house, yeah. but you know something came up and we have no problems going out to other bands, you know, because you know as I said we have to support each other. I mean we are a look. I, I mean we are. We gotta go tear up trees. A local <laughs> show. And these guys are badass local men, so we gotta stick together on this. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, this is all the time we have for this episode. Normally, bands run a little bit longer, but we gotta get these guys out of the trees so they can tear the goddamn roof off. Guys, it has been an absolute fucking pleasure to have you. If we can just say one more thing, um, the song that we're gonna have at the end of the uh, the podcast after after this is over, um, they're gonna be hearing takers, which which is what you're gonna play the show. So why don't you go into this song right quick and tell us what it's about exactly? Really, it's about taking people, make them disappear, and use parts of the remains to fertilize our crop. Fuck yes, bullshit. Ladies and gentlemen, crop dust. This Smoke radioactive weed. Hell yeah, this is. T-